The word janky gets thrown around a lot these days, and uh, I, I, I just, I, uh. Hi there, how you doing? I'm TechTweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. Reviewing this thing has been a, a roller coaster. Not literally. I haven't been on an actual roller coaster in years. They make my tummy sore. No, I mean a figurative roller coaster. A roller coaster of emotions. And yeah, it, it still made my tummy sore. My first impressions of the Super Console X5 Pro were good, and then they went really, really bad. And then just when they were at their lowest, they actually shot way up, and now I actually kind of love this thing. But before anything else, I want to set some realistic expectations here. This is basically the most powerful plug and play retro console that has ever existed. It can play everything up to and including GameCube, PS2, 3DS. It comes preloaded with four terabytes of retro games, including all the higher end stuff. It all comes pre-configured. You just kind of set it up and start playing your games. I think overall, it, it's a great device for the right customer. As long as you don't mind tucking it away where you can't see it. Like you do with your ugly kid when you have guests over. That's fine though, he, he has his iPad. So yeah, let's get the form factor discussion out of the way right now because it's it's a thing. Here's the device itself. It, it looks alright. It's kind of black and boring. But the actual device is only half of the console. The other half is the hard drive. And this is the, the hard drive that you get. It's a 3.5 inch internal PC hard drive. No enclosure, no cool looking external drive, not a drive to put inside the console. No, it's just a giant ugly PC hard drive. I mean, come on, make a cheap case for this thing or put a sticker on it or something. Just pretend that you're trying. That's all I need. This is an Android box, but it's very powerful. This is rocking the RK3588S processor. We'll talk about the performance in a bit. We also get 8 gigabytes of DDDDR4 RAM, only 64 gigabytes of EMMMC internal storage, but storage isn't really an issue because the external hard drive is a big, fat 4 terabytes. And yeah, it comes preloaded with games, obviously. And then we get uh, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, Gigabit Ethernet. Now let's do a little tour of the thing. There's no buttons or holes on the front. On one side, we get four USB-A holes, along with a micro SD card hole. Around back, we get a power button, Ethernet hole, USB-C hole, optical audio hole, HDMI 2.1 hole, 3.5 millimeter audio hole, and a power plug hole. And on the other side, we get, we get a, a SATA connection thing. And we actually get a good HDMI cord for once. And we get a 24 watt power thing. And we also get an air mouse. And this is one of the better air mouses that I've used. It, it sort of feels like a Wiimote and you can use it to navigate the system or the front end and also the settings for your apps. Even use this for like touchscreen stuff on, you know, 3DS or whatever. Also in the box, you get a GameSir T3 wireless controller. And nice that we're not getting garbage controllers with this setup. And of course, we get a hard drive. This is a four terabyte Seagate Skyhawk SATA drive. It's a it's an internal drive SATA connection over here, and you plug it in with this SATA adapter cable. So yeah, that that's um, yeah. Oh, look at that. It says subscribe to TechTweeb on the underside. Neat. Uh, I was just thinking about asking you to subscribe. That's convenient. This comes pre-set up with Android TV 12. You can access the device settings and stuff, but there's not much that you need to do here because everything is pre-set up. So no need to muck about with any of the settings or stuff. We're here for emulation and the emulation front end that they have set up here for us is the Pegasus front end. And this is where the good news starts because this is really well done. You can navigate with the controller or the air mouse and you can switch between your systems and scroll through through the games, select the game, and boom, it starts up right away and it works. If it's a RetroArch game, you'll see that they have some nice bezels for around the screen and a CRT shader to make it look like it's running on an old monitor. If you want to adjust any of this stuff, you can do it right here in the emulator. The RetroArch settings are all default, so you can use the RetroArch hotkeys to open the menu, save and load your state, 
change the shader on a per system basis, whatever you want to do. Zero configuration needed on your part. Everything just works as it should. The systems they use standalone emulators are Nintendo 64, Nintendo DS, 3DS, PSP, PS2, GameCube, Wii, and Nintendo Snitch. However, since this isn't RetroArch, you'll need to use the Android controller to save your games and exit the emulator. And one thing that Ken Hank has done very, very well here is create an amazing collection of games. For the old stuff, you'll get 1G, 1R ROM sets, which means one game, one ROM, with an English North American priority. That means that systems like Atari, NES, Game Boy, Game Gear, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, TurboGrafx-16, and Arcade, these systems will have all the games, but not a, a ton of junk ROMs. Just clean, easy to navigate, usable collections. This is exactly what I like to see. And because this is a 4 terabyte drive, we get a ton of higher end stuff. We get every single Nintendo 64 game, and every single Sega Saturn game, every Dreamcast game, and every single PS1 game. Which is nuts. Only 15 Nintendo DS games, but we get 482 3DS games. That's a lot of 3DS games. And 800 PSP games. These aren't PSP mini games either. There's a separate list with 250 of those. These are full PSP games. And it doesn't stop there. We also get every single GameCube game. All of them. If, if there is a GameCube game that you want to play, it's on here. We also get 33 Wii games, which isn't nearly as much, but most Wii games required a Wiimote to play properly, so that's not too surprising, I guess. And then we get 658 PS2 games. I had to reread that number because these games are big. That, that's that's uh, so many PS2 games. That's crazy. And then we have one Snitch game. Just what? Why is that? Well, my theory is that they had a ton of Snitch games on here, and then when the big N started cracking down on Snitch emulation, they bailed on that and left one game just to show you that Snitch works. But, but if you actually want to play Snitch games on here, then you'll have to add your own games. But hey, at least it's all set up for you. But what about the performance, you ask? And I answer. This thing is a freaking beast. It can play everything on here, more or less. It's all set up with good defaults so you won't have to muck about with finding the perfect settings or whatever. It's all locked and loaded, ready to rock. Really, all the old stuff is gonna run A-OK, -okay, even with shaders or whatever. And we already talked about all the game collections which are amazing, so there's nothing else we can really say about that stuff. For the early 3D stuff, you're also good to go. You can upscale PS1 to whatever resolution that you want. Same with Nintendo 64, same with Sega Saturn and Dreamcast. There's really nothing I can show you here that'll be valuable because it all just works perfectly. I'm particularly impressed that they have every PS1 game on here. The PS1 is such an amazing system with so many great games and lots of these home console products can play PS1 perfectly, but none of them come with every PS1 game. And also N64 and Saturn and Dreamcast. If you like the 3D games from this era, then, then this is it. This is the one. It's the only emulation console that comes with every game for all those systems and plays them all perfectly that I know of. 3DS is more, more or less good to go. I didn't try every game. Obviously, there's 482 3DS games on here, so maybe some won't work and not every game will run at 100% perfect performance, but I didn't find any that weren't playable and enjoyable. You can play your Pokemons and your Smash Bros, so yeah, go have fun with that. GameCube is great on here. We can play basically everything, and these games are so fun to play. <laughs> Even the hardest to run stuff like, like uh, the Rogue Squadron games will run. There will be a couple games that give you a bit of a slowdown, so you might need to adjust some settings if you want to get perfect performance, but that's only for like the top 10% hardest games. They have the mainline version of Dolphin installed, and it worked great most of the time, but I did get a few crashes, which went away when I switched to the OpenGL backend. So try that if your favorite game is crashing on you. I ended up installing Dolphin MMJR just to compare, and it ran a little better, as it always does, and it didn't have any crashes, so that's what I stuck with. However, if you get this, I just recommend updating Dolphin and sticking with the default settings because the vast majority of games were totally fine. It's set to run at 2x resolution by default, but I bumped that up to 3x resolution and it had no problems. It's a beautiful GameCube experience, and the fact that GameCube runs so well and comes with every single GameCube game ever is still baffling to me with this thing. PS2 games run through the Aether SX2 emulator, 
and it's it's working so good. <laughs> the vast majority of games can be upscaled to 4x resolution, but a few struggle and run better at 3x resolution, so I just left it at that. I didn't test every game, but everything that I tried worked great. Not perfect. I, I did get a little bit of slowdown at one point in Call of Duty 3, but it was still playable, and that was the only game I experienced that with. It's kind of nuts that we're getting PS2 at this price. This was previously the realm of gaming PCs, and now we get it on pre-made emulation consoles. And the one snitch game that was on here ran in the Skyline Edge emulator. It's the Contra collection, so it's not demanding, but it ran. Maybe if you install a bunch of games, you'll get a good snitch experience. I don't know. I'm not going to do that here on YouTube. You're on your own for that. But out of the box, you get Contra and just to get you started, I guess. I wanted to mention that this thing does have a fan, but it's very quiet, even when you're playing high-end stuff. It's way quieter than most mini PCs that I've tested. I'd rank this a peeling a banana on the Dweeby Decibel scale. This whole setup is 320 bucks if you use the coupon on Amazon, which sounds like a lot, but here's the thing. I can't think of any other setup that you can get that will cost 320 bucks that will do what you can do with this thing and will give you as much storage and games as you get on here. Yes, there are many PCs that will outperform it at 320 bucks, but you don't get four terabytes of storage preloaded with games all set up for you. And you won't get an air mouse and a controller with that. You can buy all these components individually, a powerful Android box and a four terabyte hard drive and a controller and a mouse, but then you'll be paying almost the same that this is going for and you'll have to download all the stuff and set it up yourself. I've shown off emulation drives on my channel before. I'm a big fan of them because it's a huge time saver to get a giant collection of games all set up for you. And here you get a drive bundled with the console that can play them, all pre-configured and ready to rock. So while it's not cheap, for, for what you get here, I think this is actually an amazing deal. This is the, the next generation of pre-set up retro game emulation consoles. And while the good folks over at Kinhank who make this have some work to do to make it beautiful, you still get a lifetime of gaming with this one purchase, with no other hardware needed. If you have nostalgia for GameCube and PS2 or anything before that, then this is it. This is the only pre-built home console that does all that stuff that I know of. It's just that it's not going to impress anyone by the way it looks. If you can look past the ugly exterior and see the beauty within, you'll probably love this thing. And if you want to pick one up, there's a link down there in the thingy below. And that brings us to the end. Thanks for watching and stuff. If you like this video, then check out this video, my review of the biggest freaking emulation drive that I've ever seen. 12 terabytes of games on that one. That's It's crazy. There's a link on the screen now and down in the description below. <laughs> That's it from me. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.